Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson one of the Hello World series of my 8086 assembly program tutorials. In this lesson we go back to the real basics. We're going to look at a single example that shows a Hello World message on the screen. In this case we're going to be looking at an MS-DOS emulation, a DOSBox machine here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating this, this Hello World message just here. That's all we're going to do, would you believe? But we're going to go through every single stage of it. We're going to be looking at a single file that's going to create the Hello World message. We're going to look at how to compile that file with our assembler and how to set up our emulator DOS box in this case to actually show the um, Hello World message on screen as quickly as possible. It's automated so that when I start it up, it shows the Hello World message. And really this is intended, if you don't want to download my build scripts from my website, then you can create your own and you can learn what I did and make your own better versions, hopefully. So that's what we're going to be doing. Well, let's go over to the source code and let's take a look. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at the source code that we're working with today. So this is the entire file for the basic example here. We do have a slightly more advanced example, which will show a hello world with a monitor, and we'll have a look at it in just a moment. Okay, so let's go over the sections and let's see how it works. So the first thing we're doing here is we're defining a model for the um, building. Now, this is something that's pretty um, exclusive to 8086, really. You don't see it in Z80 or anything like that. But we're defining to the assembler what kind of program we're creating. Now, I've been creating EXE files executables. Now, these are potentially very large, although the ones I created are very small. Now, a COM file is the smallest kind of program. That's a 64K program, which only has really one segment. The data and the code are all combined in that 64 kilobytes. Now, that felt a little bit oversimplistic because that would have meant that we didn't have to worry about things like working with segment registers. So that's not what I'm using. I'm actually using an executable file, but I'm using what's known as a small executable file. And there's different model sizes depending on the size and how many segments there are. And this is really one that I felt was a good beginner's point without going to the super simple example of the com file. So that's what I'm using. We're then defining some data for the stack. We're defining 1024 bytes here, and that's in this this stack definition here. And then we've got a data segment defined by dot data here. And what that is, is that our data segment. So that's where we can put our data that we're going to read in with the default DS segment register just here. So we've got our hello world message in this case. And in my tutorials, I use a character 255 terminated hello world message. If you're wondering why, well, that's what I started using and I want everything to be consistent across all my tutorials. So now we're stuck with it, even though I know a lot of systems would prefer zero termination and it's actually possibly easier with zero termination. But as I say, yeah, I've started, so I shall finish, so to speak. Now, we've got the code segment here, and this represents the start of our program. So we're first initializing the data segment here, DS, and we're pointing that to the data area. Now, we put an at symbol here, and that will specify for the assembler to work out the segment of the data segment, and that's what we're doing there. And we are transferring that into DS, but we can't transfer it directly. You can't transfer a value straight into DS or ES. You have to do it through another register. So we're using AX here just to transfer it. And then we're doing the same for the code segment for ES. Now, um, I don't think this one actually needs that. Uh, and that, that's possibly extra there. But um, basically, some of my examples use ES to point to the code segment, uh, some of the sort of template. The advanced version with the monitor will probably need that, though. So uh, it's just probably got left over there. Now, what we're doing next is we are loading in into the SI register the offset of hello within the data segment. And we're using this offset command to do that there. And then we're running this print string routine. And this is my 255 terminated print string routine. And what it does is it loads a single byte from the segment register DS offset SI. So DSSI is the source. We load in the character, compare it to 255. And if it is a 255, then we've done and we return. If not, then we call print chart, which will show it to the screen and increase our offset SI here to the next character. Our print chart routine, well, we're relying on the firmware to do all the work for us. We are calling it off to the um, BIOS here and we're using int 21, which is a DOS interrupt. We are using sub function two, which is output character to monitor and the character that's output is the DL register. Now our code here is using the AL register. So we're just transferring that into DL here for when we call this, and that is showing a single character to the screen. Now we've effectively extended that with our print string routine to print an entire string to the screen. And that's the way I do things. In all of my tutorials, I use basically as little as possible of the firmware or the BIOS, whatever. And, in the, and so that's usually just printing a character, and then I build that into my own print string routine. Now on the DOS system, we can create a new line 
by showing a character 13 followed by a character 10 and you can see them just here. So we're using that same dot interrupt character 2 function here. A character 13 is a new line and a character 10 is a carriage return and that's back to the old typewriter days when you had a mechanical head or a dot matrix head that would print and these were the codes that would reset the screen so that the cursor moves to the start of the next line so we send those together on this system just depend on the system some you don't do that and that's the entire example you've already seen it once and there it is and there's that nice hello world there very exciting so that's the entire example now how do we build it well, I have a batch file I use. Um, now, this is the VGA version, but to be honest, the, um, the graphics mode doesn't matter in this case. This is just for my graphics examples where there's different sections of code that will enable and disable for CGA, EGA, and VGA. Um, so we're just going to look at this one because it's, um, it's as good as any of them. Now, let's go over the code of this. So here's the batch file. And really, all of the work is effectively being done just by this single line. The rest is just to check the environment setup correctly. I do get a lot of people having trouble with my um, build scripts sometimes because they've not run it from the drive letter and things. And so to try and avoid that, a lot of extra code here. But really, this is the line that's doing all the work. I'm using an assembler called UASM. Now, this is an MASM Microsoft Assembler compatible. It's free and open source, though, which is what I like. So that's what I use. So we're using UASM as the assembler. And then we're defining some symbols build DOS, DOS VGA. Now these aren't really needed in this basic example, but um, these are the equivalent of, of doing an EQU statement within our code and by doing them on the batch file command line. We can change the way that the assembler files compile depending on the batch file and that's how I build for VGA and how I have an example that builds for DOS and the Wonderswan. So you don't need those for a basic example, but they're certainly worth you knowing about because it's a really handy way of making multi-platform code, which is what these tutorials are about. The MZ um, command here, this specifies that we're building an, an executable, an exe file, and not a com file. Uh, we're then specifying we're going to output a listing file. Listing files are really handy if you're debugging, if you don't understand what's going on in your code when it finishes up. They produce a file which contains each line of our source and the bytes that they end up as. And um, when I'm writing my tutorials, this can be very handy because sometimes the assemblers are doing things that they don't tell me about optimization wise. And so a command that shouldn't work does. And it's because the assembler has converted a an absolute reading to a relative one, or it's converted a command like on the arm where you can only load very small amounts of values into registers in one go and it split them up into multiple com multiple commands and it makes it look like the arm can do things it can't and that confuses me and then I get the comments pointing out that I'm wrong in my doing my videos which isn't so good so yes yeah, so they're really helpful those listing files you won't need them as a beginner but um, I would suggest if your assembler lets you have them I would output them because one day you might need them and then they'll be there for you and then finally we're specifying the output file prog.exe in this case here you can see there's this build file percent build file percent now this is the source file um, it's build file percent build file because I'm using a batch file and I'm doing loads of things to the file name here so um, that would be if you were using your own code if you were just running this from command line for example that would be the name of the file you were trying to assemble so um, hello world.asm something like that now, that's how we build our file. What about how we run it? Well, we're using DOSBox Portable, which is a portable apps version of DOSBox. You can get it from portableapps.com. And um, we're disabling the console here. And that will start up DOSBox. And then what happens to what DOSBox does when it starts up is entirely defined by its own script. And we've got this dosbox.conf here, which has all kinds of confusing things that you will probably struggle with. And um, you do need to maybe change a few of them. Now, one thing you might want to take a look at is cycles. This is how fast the machine runs. If your game's running far too fast, you can slow it down. But the section I want to show you is the auto exec section here. This is the part that is run when the DOSBox starts up. So we can put any lines in here and these will be executed as if they're commands in the DOSBox command line. Now the first one we're using here is this DOSBox specific command mount and this mounts a virtual drive to a physical location. So I'm mounting the C drive to the release x86 folder which is the destination where I compiled my executable to. I then change the drive letter to C which is the C, the drive we just mounted and I run prog.exe and that's why as soon as I compile my program not only does it build, but you then also get the message. And you can see here that it has mounted here. 
you can see it's mounted C and then it's changed the C drive and then it has run prog.exe which is exactly what that script told it to do. As I say this is quite important um, it, it's okay if you're just starting out to just try to assemble something but when you're, st when you're compiling for a program and you're going to be making lots of mistakes, I make lots of mistakes, it's pretty normal so if you're going to have to run the program a hundred times to get a problem fixed and write a game well uh, if you save a few seconds each time or if it takes you a few minutes that's going to make a huge difference to the amount of time your program is going to take to complete so I'd put a bit of time in at first trying to get your scripts as good as possible and save as much time get everything automated you don't want to be typing things in over and over again you don't want to be manually loading your files in okay so that's the main example now we're not going to go over the exact workings of this next one I just want to show it you as a bonus now what this is is the hello world example with my monitor tools now what my monitor tools are is these allow you to see the contents of the registers you can see here you've got a dump of the registers here and also they dump the memory where you can specify a range of memory and that gets dumped to the screen as well and these are my debugging tools and these are fantastic for getting started or also for quick testing if you're playing with the joystick which I was recently you're reading in some values and you want to just quickly see them on the screen you don't want to write some special scripts to do that you can just use the monitor and that will show them to the screen and get you started a little bit quicker so the functions are called do monitor because monitor had another function on this machine so do monitor is the function that will show the registers and the mem dump will dump an area of memory specified by BP and it will show BX bytes here so that's how we can show parts of the memory so say they're just a little bonus they basically use my print char routine and my new line routines so as long as you've got those working on a 8086 based system these will work for you and so I just throw them in as a little bonus there for you Okay, well, that's the end of this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I always say, if you can go to my website, you can download all of the um, example code and also the build scripts with the pre-configured Notepad++ you've seen today. So if you want to have a go, please go ahead and do that and um, hopefully you'll be able to compile them and get going really quickly. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, I would ask you to consider hitting the like button and also subscribing. The reason I say that is if you like the videos, then YouTube recommends them to more people and hopefully they like them as well. And um, subscribing, well, it's just simply, it's a big motivation for me, if nothing else, um, because I like to see people who are enjoying my videos because I have to put a lot of work into making them. So that would help out. And also, of course, you will see the future videos as well because this isn't going to be the last DOS one. So if you've enjoyed this one, I'm sure you're going to enjoy those as well. Anyway, thanks for watching today. If you've enjoyed this video today, please consider supporting my content. It takes 20 to 30 hours a week to keep making these videos. It's basically all I do when I'm not doing my day job. And it's only through the support of my patrons and the other sponsors that I'm able to continue justify doing it, essentially. You can back me on Patreon. I post a weekly update with the latest work on the current projects I'm doing. You can see one here and also the newest videos. There's a large backlog of videos that are currently only available to the patrons, although they will all be available to everyone later on. And also it's the backers who I ask when it comes to making decisions on how to change the content in the future, what new content to create and things like that. You can see there was recently a survey of the backers so I can plan next year's content. As well as Patreon, you can now become a member of my channel on YouTube. There's a join button you should see just below this video. You can use that. YouTube backers get the same content as Patreon. I just post it through the YouTube interface instead of the Patreon. It's the same content every week. Also, if you prefer, you can go to my Teespring store and you can get some Chibi Akamas merchandise or some Learn ASM merchandise if you prefer, if that's how you'd like to back me. Links for all three are in the description of this video below. Uh, anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.